I just want to take you on a journey this afternoon on the experience that I've had the last 10 years in this idea of creativity and innovation and looking at soil and art. And before I do that, I'd like to recognize a few organizations, a few people, and because without them, I, I couldn't do what I do. And first of all, I'd like to recognize the MLA Kinderline campus because that has been the place where I've been able to incubate a lot of my ideas in terms of what I've done and having the opportunity to interact with artists and writers and, and various people. And it's just been a wonderful place for me to have that kind of opportunity to interact with different people. Without the resources from the President's Fund from the MLA Kinderline campus or the ICCC or the Gwena Moss Center, uh, the College of Ag, they've all been very, very helpful in providing resources in order for me to do the things that I do. And I'd also like to thank my colleagues in the Department of Soil Science because they have created a culture and nurturing this idea of teaching excellence. And for that, I really am very appreciative, as well as my technician, Doug Jackson, and all the grad students who helped me with my classes because without them, I couldn't do what I do. The other person I'd like to recognize is uh, Allison Glenn, who I've partnered with. She's from the Department of Art, Art History, and uh, I've been partnering with her the last couple of years in doing this idea of soil pigments, which I'll talk about in a minute. And the last person I'd like to recognize is Paul Trache, who is the former director of the MLA Canadine campus. And he had a passion for ecology, the arts, but he also had an education background. And uh, we would have wonderful talks about what I was doing, experiential learning. He'd be talking to me about Dewey, who I, I didn't know. And uh, so all these interactions that I had with him were really a wonderful experience over the last 10 years in terms of what I was trying to do. I'd also like to dedicate this talk to the memory of my colleague, Terry Tolson, who had a passion for teaching and loved students. And I also had the opportunity to take him out in the field and to play and to experiment a little bit with this idea of soil and art. So I dedicate this talk to him. Many of you are aware of the third integrated plan. And there are a lot of things in that plan, but one of the things that strikes me in terms of what I'm doing is this idea of creativity and innovation. And I've just taken a little excerpt here out of the uh, third integrated plan. And if you were to read it, you would find the word creativity mentioned about six times and innovation mentioned about 24 times. And I think the whole idea for this particular paragraph is that the university is really interested in faculty having an opportunity to be creative, to be innovative, so that they can do things for their students. And so what I'm going to do today is take you on a little bit of a journey of what I've been through to see what this actually looked like. And because I've started 10 years ago, which was before this plan was actually written. And I think you have to think about, you know, have you ever had a creative idea? How did you know you had a creative idea? And what did you do with that creative idea? And so I'm just going to share with you a little bit about what I went through when I went through this journey of combining soil and art together. A couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to uh, go to a talk here on campus by Sir Ken Robinson. And it was just a wonderful opportunity to listen to him talk about creativity. And I've been reading his books um, as I reflect back on this over a number of years. And he defines creativity as the process of having original ideas that have value. Creativity is applied imagination, and creativity is also interdisciplinary. And when I think about innovation, I think it's about taking that creative idea and actually applying it so that it adds value, and in my case, in teaching and learning. So what I've been doing up to 10, before 10 years ago was taking my students out in the field, giving them an experiential learning opportunity because that's what I had in my education, and I felt it was very important that students get out in the field. In our program, we like students to get dirty, play with soil, and also as well as looking at vegetation. And so that's what I've been doing for a number of years, as well as trying to create a sense of community with my students out in the field for that first week or two in class. And in 2004, our department consciously decided to do more things related to experiential learning. We wanted to give our students more opportunities to get out in the field and do things because we as faculty felt that was important. But we also felt that industry wanted our students to have those kinds of experiences as well because they loved hiring our students. And so that year, I decided, all right, I'm going to teach a new course. And I'm going to call it Soils and Boreal Landscapes. And uh, as I was thinking about what I was going to do for this course, because I wanted to do something different than what I've been doing in my Forest Souls course. And uh, that spring, I had an opportunity to visit my mother in Ontario. And if you knew me 10 years ago, uh, you would know that I didn't know anything about art. That was the big void in my life. I had no clue about painting, going to galleries, or anything. Art was just not a part of who I was. I was a science guy. And so my mom asked if I would go along with her to the McMichael Gallery in Kleinberg. And I said, OK, mom, I'll go. And so I went to this gallery, and as I walked through those doors of the gallery, and I started looking at the paintings, and I did know who the Group of Seven was, but as I was looking at the uh, paintings on the wall, 
all of a sudden I had this idea. Why couldn't my students actually paint landscapes? And the next second I thought, well, you can't, Ken, because you don't know anything about art. And so I thought, hmm, this is kind of interesting. I had this creative idea, which I thought was a creative idea, but I didn't know what to do with it. And so fortunately for me, I had a sister-in-law who was a high school art teacher, and I went to talk to her and I said, hey, what could I do? Something very simple. She said, just grab some oil pastels, some paper, I'll write down a couple of rules for you, and go with it. So that's what I did. So I stepped out of my comfort zone and tried it. And when I look back now at that, I was wondering, you know, why did that happen to me? Why did I have that idea in this art gallery? And there are a lot of people who've talked about these kind of things. Stephen Johnson in his book, Where Good Ideas Come From, as well as uh, Kostler in his book. It's this idea when you put different disciplines together, sometimes collisions happen and these ideas happen. And I think maybe that's what happened to me. Here was a science guy walking into an art gallery and something happened. And so that was the idea I had. So I want to talk with you a little bit about what I did. And fortunately for me, someone put me in contact with the MLA Kennedyne campus and that's where I held my class. And the interesting thing about MLA Kennerdine campus, if you don't know, this campus was started back in about 1936 by Gus Kennerdine, and it was an art school. And just a little sideline here, Gus Kennerdine's first student was a woman by the name of Pannoni Mulcaster. 24 years ago, when I moved to Saskatoon, I bought a house on Mulcaster Crescent, not knowing that it was an artist. And so, in 2005, I actually had an opportunity to meet her uh, at Kennerdine on the celebration. So it was just kind of interesting how that all came about. But Kennerdine was my base that I was using, and it was kind of interesting that it was an art school, and I was trying to do art, so I thought it was kind of a good fit. So what we would do is we would go in the field with the students, we would dig our soil pits, we would classify, we would look at vegetation, and try to understand the relationship between vegetation and soils and how that related to the landscape from a scientific perspective. But this actually is a picture from my very first class in 2004. And uh, I wanted the students to try to engage in the landscape from a different perspective than from science. And I said, all right, here's some oil pastels, here's some paper. <laughs> Put something on the paper. Because I didn't really know what I was doing. And so the students, you know, agreed to do it and they looked at this soil profile and the vegetation and they tried to draw something. And so you always wonder how that's going to work. And in the end, you look at the smiles on their faces, I think it went pretty good, actually. So this was the very first class that I had back in 2004. After that class, I realized that I needed to learn something about art. And so that following summer, I started taking art classes. I started taking painting classes, and I've taken painting classes ever since. But I knew that I needed, as an instructor, to understand a little bit about the art world. And so it's been a wonderful journey for me to understand what's happening in art and, and various things related to art. And I'm really glad that I had an opportunity to do that. But since that time, we've graduated from just using oil pastels, and now we're using charcoal to draw with. I have students actually now painting with acrylic paints. And so we've provided a wonderful range of mediums for these students to use to try to connect to the landscape to create this kind of sense of place from a different perspective than science. And here again is just an example of some of the, the pictures from that, but it was an interesting opportunity to see how they were actually connecting with the landscape. Was it, and how real was it in terms of their connection to it, in terms of a science perspective and an art perspective? One of the other beautiful things about MLA Kennerdine campus is that, and this is what we would, I guess people would call the unintended. Um, at the same time we were having our class there, there was a group of uh, prairie painters. These were retired folks from the Capel Valley, and they were there each week every year that I was painting there. And what I would do is I would take my students into the studio and let them interact with these painters and have a wonderful time in the evening asking questions, bantering back and forth, and just trying to understand the artist versus the student. And at the end of the week, I would reverse it. I would take all the students' work, hang it up, and have all the artists come in and talk to the students. And it was just wonderful to see this interaction between different generations, between science and art. And it was sometimes the, the artists would ask the students, where had you been? What kinds of trees had you seen? What part of the, the province had you been to? And it was just a wonderful kind of experience and, and interaction that I never had really intended to happen in my class. Ken Robinson also talks about this idea of art techniques can be powerful ways of unlocking creative capacities and of engaging the whole person. And when I look back to what I'm doing, um, I'm trying, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet, but I think I'm engaging the whole person, not only from a science side, 
but also from an artistic side, and visual arts, the left brain, the right brain. And I know there's a lot more to this than, than what I'm doing, but it's something that I'm trying to understand and thinking about the whole student. And I think that's something very important when we have folks in our class, students in our class, we need to think about the whole person, not just the teaching, but the things that we can learn from them as well. So as a soil scientist, I, I had to throw up a nice soil profile. Um, and just to give you a little note, next year is actually the International Year of Soils. And so put a little plug in because you will be hearing some stuff from our department about this later on. But so I, I've been teaching this course for a number of years and I started thinking, what other things could I do? And as a soil scientist, you know, there's, there's soils that have very beautiful colors in them. And I started thinking about, you know, could I use this material to actually paint with? And as um, Philip Guston, who was an American painter, stated, what is paint after all? It's just colored dirt. And so I think, okay, this is kind of an interesting thing. Maybe we can do something with this. And I just happened to read an article in the Canadian Geographic about a guy in Ontario who was an artist from Conestoga who was collecting pigments from a 100-mile radius of his home. And he was using those natural pigments to create his icons that he was painting. So I thought, i got to meet this guy. So the next time I visited my mother, I went to uh, visit him and, and spent a couple hours talking to him about what he was doing in terms of taking these pigments, grinding them up, and then painting with them. And so after our discussions over a number of years, I said, why don't you come help us do this for a class? And so two years ago, I joined up with Allison Glenn from Art Art History, and we decided that we would try to do this class of creating pigments from natural materials. But I added a twist to this. What if you took soil science graduate students and you took master of fine art students and you put them together for a week, what would happen? And so that's what we did. We uh, took students from each program, put them together for a week and see what happened. And so we would take bones and antlers and all kinds of things, put them in these containers, throw them in the fire and in the morning we would open them up like Christmas presents to see what kinds of colors would come depending on where you were placed in the fire pit. As a little bit of an experiment. So we're trying to do this idea of experiments as well as creating this idea of combining science and, and art together. So you take the pigments, or here are burnt antlers, and then the students would grind them up. And then on a finer scale, we had to grind them with a glass plate and a Mueller to make them really fine so that we could actually paint with them. And we also take soils. And so I've been collecting soils from across the province and using those as well. And the students could just play and experiment and do whatever they wanted in the lab in the mornings. And so here they are creating different kinds of colors. And then now and then we would add in a kind of really nice color because earth color sometimes, or earth tone color sometimes are a little drab. But uh, these students all would have an opportunity to make these colors and then we would use a binder called egg yolk to paint with. And the nice thing with having Allison around is that she would also help instruct the soil science students on how to paint and give them some demonstrations as well as some exercises to do in the field. In the afternoon, we would go to various boreal ecosystems and the students would be able to engage with that ecosystem and paint whatever they wanted with the materials that they had used. And so here's just an example of one ecosystem by the Spruce River in PA National Park. And here's another place out at Clarine where we take a lot of our students. And it's just a wonderful opportunity for the students to engage with natural ecosystems because many of these students, especially the art students, had never really even painted outside, especially this class this past year. This is just, again, an example of their work. And the other interesting thing that I saw happening with this class is that this past year in June when we did the class, is that I started to see this mingling of art and science students together and doing things together. And here are two students from each of the different programs. And they spend an afternoon together just working on how to make different colors. And by changing the pH, either lowering it or raising it, you can create these different shades of reds with this material that we had. And I thought that was just really neat to see that they would actually spend time together getting to know one another. And I think really that's what universities should be about too, right? Developing relationships between, between people. The other part of this whole class was that they had to have an exhibition. And uh, two years ago, they started off with an exhibition in the Snellgrove Gallery. And then last, this past June, we had another one called Borrowing the Boreal. And so the students had to select their artwork and uh, put it up in the Snellgrove Gallery. And it was open to the public for two weeks. And it was just a wonderful experience seeing these students all come together, put their artwork up, and having the public come in and, and enjoy it. And then we had a wonderful reception on the last night of this, the show. So I've been through a lot with this idea of going from just taking paint and incorporating it into a science class and then using the very material that I've studied all my life and actually painting with it. I don't know where this is going to go. Um, 
I need some more time, I guess, to think about it, but I think it's been a wonderful journey for me in terms of being able to do the things that I have been able to do. I must say, though, that not only has it been a wonderful thing for my students, but it's also been a transformative experience for me. And uh, I can't tell you uh, what it means to me to go out with these guys and go paint in the, in the bush or painting up north. And uh, I've got to meet these gentlemen, and we call ourselves the men who paint. But uh, we, uh, we all have a single connection, and that is MLA Kennedine Campus. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience that I probably would have never had if I had never started doing this thing. I've also done some other weird creative things, I guess, taking, making soil art and uh, trying to capture soil profiles using canvases and paint. And the other thing that I'd like to try, I'm trying to do is just this understanding burnt boreal ecosystems and how do you engage with the landscape. A lot of people will take charcoal and actually draw with it, but what I try to do is actually enter into this ecosystem and use the trees as my, my, my marks to create different kinds of artwork. And so it's just something really different, but again, I think it all has developed from this idea of the things that I've been trying to do with incorporating science and art. This actually happened to be my research plot that got burnt, so it was kind of a dual thing here, so. <laughs> so, what do you do with creative ideas? I, I had a creative idea. I thought at one time it was kind of a weird idea. Maybe I was even a little cuckoo, but um, I think once you start doing these kinds of things, and I think the important thing for me is that I had to learn is that I had to step out of my comfort zone. And for many of us, that's uncomfortable. And so I'm glad I did. It wasn't easy. Uh, I've had a lot of you know, ups and downs. But I tell that to my students. You know, Life is like that. You've got to step out of your comfort zone. And I think the art component of this class certainly does that for these students. Uh, last week, a lot of them were very uncomfortable doing it. But I think it's an important part of growth and learning. And so I don't know where this is going to go. Um, but I, I've certainly enjoyed the opportunities that I've had to work with these students. And it really has been kind of a, a neat experience. And so I'll leave you with this last little story. Uh, three weeks ago, I was walking from the Snell Grove Gallery into the biology building. And uh, I happened to be following a couple with their three-year-old grandson. And as I was approaching the, the building, I overheard them talking to their grandson, saying, you know, you're going to go into this building. There's going to be all these dinosaurs. There's going to be fish. There's going to be animals. And I'm not sure he really totally understood what they were trying to tell him. So as I followed him through the double doors and he came into the atrium, he just went, wow. And then he did a double wow. And I was like, wow. It was just amazing to watch this little guy and just see the amazement on his face to experience this kind of thing. And as I stood there looking at this little guy, I thought, you know, why can't we, or, or maybe our goal should be that we should try to have our students, maybe they should have a wow experience at least once in their career here at the U of S. And I think that's a wonderful goal to, to shoot for, whether it's you know, experiential learning, it's out in the field, in the classroom, Husky Athletics, doing research, whatever. But I'm hoping that students would have that wow experience too, just like this little guy did. And as I look back and reflect on the 10 years that I've been going through this journey and the doors that I went through at the McMichael Gallery, you know, I look back and I just, just say, wow, as well. So thank you very much.